The broker is a very versatile pattern. It manages dynamic communication between clients and servers in distributed systems. Let's look at the depiction. What is happening here? We as a client want to do something. We have a request and uh, we cannot do this request by ourselves. We have to rely on some external service, but we don't know who is the responsible server for this. We don't know who can do this. The client itself just calls some method. And we have a proxy here. And the idea of the proxy is if we can do this ourselves, this request, if we can solve this ourselves, then let's do it locally. But if not, for example, if we don't have a high performance graphics card, we shouldn't do our machine learning training locally. We should delegate it to some cloud service, which has high performance hardware, which can solve this much faster. Or if we want to save power on our low power devices, like on smartphones or on IoT devices, we can just send a request onto a server who does some yeah, calculations and responds back. The client proxy should decide if we should communicate it or if it stays locally. And for that, he packs our request which is just, just a function call into this small letter, into a message, and sends this message over to the broker. The client proxy does have to know at least who is the responsible broker. Who can I ask for help? The broker gets this message, unpacks it again, or unmarshals it, or deserializes it, and then has to decide who is responsible for that. The broker has a long list of yeah, services, of servers, and then decides who can I forward this request to. In order to know this, a server, which is here, has to register before that. This is step zero in our list. A server registers, I am here and I can solve this problems. I can serve these functions. And if there is something concerning me, you can ask me. The broker knows now who to ask and then forwards it to the responsible server proxy. This is also transparent for the broker or the server doesn't know how he gets the request in the end. The server proxy just calls the correct servers. This could also be a load balancer behind this and routes this request to the corresponding server who does the processing, who does some filtering, who has access to the database and so on. And then he responds back with the result and the server proxy sends this back to the broker who knew what was the originator of this request and sends it back to this originating client proxy and the client proxy then can return the result to the client. And the cool thing here is now, the client maybe didn't even recognize that this went over the network. So it's these uh, wobbly lines here mean that we have a process boundary here. Either it's another process or it's another PC in our network or on the other side of the earth. Maybe this went around the whole globe via the internet. This part here could either be synchronously or asynchronously. So the client has to wait until the client proxy returns the results, or this is, it's split up into two methods. So first send request and that then get response to wait for the response. But this is a design decision. Also inside the broker here, it could be that not a single broker is responsible for doing all this, but actually we have multiple brokers which are distributed and working together. So let me move down here a little bit. Here it gets really interesting. If uh, a single broker cannot process it all, so here we get the request from the client proxy. And maybe we see, oh, I don't know who is responsible for this. So broker A doesn't have a server who is responsible for this. So he communicates it to another broker. And for this communication, we use a bridge in between that translates our messages. 
as you can see, there are always messages involved. And these messages don't have to be all of the same kind. It can be that here we speak XML or here we use HTTP and the client uses another format. Here we translate between different kinds of messages, between different network technologies and so on. For example, the client could use Wi-Fi for a connection and the broker uses cabled internet and so on. We are completely flexible. That's the idea of the broker pattern. And it's, okay. it's a nice approach to the, the broker thing since you have already involved a lot of other patterns as you see. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We I'm have the... proxy here. We have bridge. We have messaging. Of course, the bridge we didn't talk about yet, but I think next time we will talk about the bridge. And for messages and the whole messaging family, we have an own lecture just concerning how messaging is done. Let's talk about the individual attributes, properties of the broker. The context is that we work in a distributed and heterogeneous system or multiple systems. And we want to decouple these systems. Firstly, we want to make them compatible to each other so that they can communicate, but we also want to decouple them from each other so that they don't depend or rely on each other. Then we want to add or exchange services dynamically at runtime. If a new server is there, it should just uh, register at the broker and the broker should inform about new tasks. Then system details shall be omitted. As a developer, as the client developer, <laughs> you shouldn't uh, be aware that you're using a broker at all and how this broker is working in the background. Most of the time that there will be some broker involved, but you don't have to know about all the details. Then location transparency shall be supported. It shouldn't depend on where the broker or the server stands, actually. It should, should still work. And remote method invocation shall be supported somehow. We shouldn't be limited by the number of parameters which we could send. We should be flexible to send any kind of request we want to. And the solution is here to specify some broker API. How do we actually call the broker and define an object model? How do we send data? How do we pack the data into messages and so on? It's not on the slides, but nowadays broker use MQTT or some other kind of, of messaging system to do this. And of course, proxies should hide all implementation details. What are the consequences? The broker is now responsible for locating a server. We as a client don't have to care about that. We can change components. We can also change communication formats. We can change message formats and so on. And the client won't take notice of this. The broker can hide operating system and network details. We can also switch together multiple brokers. We can reuse components. We have fault tolerance on the server side. If one server fails, we could switch to another server, but the broker itself is not fault tolerant. The broker itself is a single point of failure. Without the broker, nothing works. Here, maybe we should also split up a broker into an initial broker who also does some load balancing to or redundancy to other brokers. But that would be possible. And such a distributed system is always hard to test and debug. You can simulate it on your local PC if everything works out. But if you really want to simulate it in the wild, this is very difficult. There's a very interesting video about how Netflix balances all his brokers and its messaging. There are problems which you <laughs> couldn't even imagine if you just think of local applications and simple client-server structures.